John, I'm not embarrassed to tell you that the question of God's existence has been something that has been with me my whole life. I really mm -hmm. wonder about it. Not, uh, I'm not particularly one to like religious formalities. Mm -hmm. I, in fact, I don't like it affirmatively. <coughs> but I am concerned about this mm -hmm. question. Uh, uh, on the scale between, uh, I, won't, I won't put believer on this scale for yeah. you, but between absolute certain atheism and very balanced agnosticism. I'll, I'll yeah. say those are the two extremes on your scale. On my scale. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, where, where are you? I'm closer to a balanced agnosticism than I am to absolute certain atheism, but for a purely logical reason, and that is you can't demonstrate a universal negative. That is, I can't demonstrate to you uh, that there aren't invisible uh, animals running around this room, and I can't demonstrate to you that God does not exist. Uh, the point, however, is that it is a very ambitious hypothesis that, that God exists, and there's very little reason to suppose that it's true. So the, uh, what a rational person, I think, has to do is to say, well, uh, there isn't enough evidence uh, to support such an adventurous hypothesis, so we have very serious doubts about it, but that doesn't mean we know that it's false. It's just there's insufficient reason to suppose it's true. I can't resist telling you an anecdote. As an undergraduate, I was a member of the Voltaire Society, mm -hmm. and we used to have dinner with Bertrand Russell, mm -hmm. and he was 85 years old. And we thought, well, you know, he's getting on in years. And we put the question to him. We said, well, suppose it were all true that after you pass away, you show up at the pearly gates. <laughs> what would you say to him? <laughs> and Russell didn't hesitate a minute. He said, I would say to him, you didn't give us enough evidence. <laughs> and that, I think, is the right answer. <laughs> if, if God does exist, which I think is very unlikely, then he is guilty of one thing. We have very inadequate evidence of his existence. Now, maybe he has some deep reason why he wants to test us, <laughs> test our faith. But there's something else about this, and that is I'm suspicious of believing something which we desperately want to believe. Mm. And, of course, one reason that this is such an important issue is we would all like to believe uh, that there is a meaningful uh, world beyond our own capacity to inject meaning into it. We'd like to suppose that life goes on after our own death. We would like to believe that the people we most love will continue to exist, and it's very hard to be told that all these wonderful people will cease to exist altogether. Furthermore, another feature is we'd like there to be justice in the end. Mm. Since it's obvious that there's <laughs> no justice here on Earth, we'd very much like there to be a divine justice which will come. But the problem is, those are things we'd like to believe, and we really have no evidence to suppose that they're true, and we ought methodologically be, to be suspicious of believing uh, something that we very much want to believe, something that would uh, make us immensely uh, satisfied, which would make us happier if we could believe it. I think religion is here to stay because it does satisfy these needs. But intellectually, I don't think you can justify it. The arguments for God's existence are uniformly bad. So when you look at the argument, the only reason you're not an, a, an absolute atheist is because you can't prove a negative. Mm -hmm. the, the, there's no other reason why you would skew towards agnosticism versus atheism. There's nothing about this world that gives you some possibility that maybe it's well designed or something? Well, I've always thought those arguments were very weak. Until Darwin, uh, it seemed a very plausible argument to suppose that the uh, existence of so much apparent design in the universe proved the existence of a des de designer. But with Darwin, we came to realize if you've got five billion years to work with, you can do an awful lot of evolutionary permutations and an awful lot of uh, selectional mechanisms. So it's just not rational. I mean, we, it's not rational to deny evolution. But once you've got evolution, then the postulation of a god as accounting for the origin of species is uh, no longer necessary. What I'm trying to discern is your conclusion of not being an outright atheist yeah. is purely the logical impossibility of proving a negative. So, yeah. so your agnosticism about God is no different, no different than your agnosticism that there's a, a, a pink rhinoceros right here that we just can't see. Yeah, I, I think it's a bit uh, stronger than that because we know a fair amount about rhinoceroses. 
uh, that we don't know about God. So it, I, my doubts would be uh, uh, stronger about God. But th here's the asymmetry. I can imagine experiences that would convince me that God existed. But the experiences that uh, would, would show that God did not exist, they seem to me readily available. The existence of uh, injustice and misery in the world, uh, uh, the existence of all kinds of uh, cruelties and all those. But theirs are inconclusive because you cannot conclus conclusively pr prove a universal negative. So I can imagine uh, experiences that would prove to me conclusively that God existed. None of which have happened. Uh, nothing like, not even remotely mm. like that. Uh, but I cannot, and I don't have experiences that similarly prove the non-existence of God. But that doesn't mean that I'm inclined to believe in the existence of God. No, I think it is an incredible hypothesis. I have not seen a religion that is, it gives a coherent, that it, even where you can make a coherent statement of the religion, if it's a supernatural religion. Uh, I, I, the idea that God would choose one people as his chosen people, or the, uh, the whole story about how uh, he sent his only son uh, to die for our sins. I, I, I haven't got any sins uh, that I, of that kind that I need to die for. What allegedly happened happened a long time ago. And the story doesn't make an awful lot of sense because apparently when uh, uh, God allows his son to die, he is himself dying because he is his son. So when Christ said, uh, why hast thou forsaken me? It has to be a soliloquy. He'd have to be talking to himself. So there are all these problems. I can't make sense out of the particular religions that are on the, uh, I mean, talking about supernatural religions now, uh, Judaism, Mohammedism, Christianism, they all seem to me more or less incoherent. But uh, there are intelligent people who believe in the existence of God, and I can only think that they believe it because they think the reality that we know about is not the only reality and they, they might be right. It's just I don't know of any reason to suppose they are right.